No sport on the planet has been so thoroughly ideologically colonized like football, or if you're American, soccer, with everyone's favorite obnoxious narcissist, Megan Rapinoe, Megan to say. being deified by regime media as a literal goddess like superhero. I'm a member of the LGBTQ community with pink hair, becoming a lightning rod for all kinds of different woke crusades, from transgenders entering and dominating female sports, to deafening calls for equal pay for female soccer players. Equal pay. Equal pay. Despite the obviously brazen golfing class between the men's game and the women's game. <laughs> along with the revenue that each of them brings in. And despite being literally thrashed by a bunch of 14 year old boys. Equal pay. To pro BLM, America loathing anti Trumpism in general. We need to have a reckoning with the message that you have and what you're saying about make America great again. Well, suffice to say, Trump had the last laugh. <laughs> The one with the purple hair, she didn't play too well. She really does deserve it. I to deserve say. this! But if you thought it was bad in the US, take a look at what's happening in the UK. Fresh from the return of Take a Knee in the men's game, betting company Paddy Power released this bizarre promo clip for the Women's World Cup. We aim to provide a safe space for men with fragile egos. Women's World Cup. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. That's the spirit in you go. Go on, get in the detention camp. Gammon. Gammon is a racial slur, but because it's exclusively used against white people, apparently that makes it okay. Used to describe flush-faced, overweight, middle-aged, white, working-class British men who voted for Brexit. Probably a huge chunk of Paddy Power's customer base then. Because sometimes it feels it's been rammed down your throat. Yeah, like coverage on one single channel is way too much. Our members can come here during the matches. That way, everyone else is safe from their tedious shite while the games are actually on. Strange how this is one of the least diverse commercials on British television right now. We encourage members to come together and share their like-minded opinions on women's football. I would watch it. I've nothing against it. <laughs> the goalkeeping's rubbish, isn't it? So they're making out men, particularly white middle-aged men, who say they don't care about women's football. Nobody cares about women's football. Oh, and they're boomer-type nationalists as well, for good measure. Oh, the good old days, eh? To be this kind of hyper-obsessed, misogynistic, chauvinist embarrassment while devoting an entire commercial specifically to demonising them. We also give them the tools for the outside world so that they have an outlet for their dull opinions if needs be. Yeah, who are the real obsessives here? Why do you care so? much about people who don't care. Not enough of them spaffing away their children's savings accounts money on women's World Cup betting slips. Brilliant that Paddy, I blooming love women's football me. Unfortunately, I also just gambled my rent money and the kids' piggy bank savings on Australia to win and now the missus wants a divorce. You gotta laugh, haven't you? It's getting really weird. We've now reached the level of social engineering, where if you don't enthusiastically support the regime's pre-approved form of bread and circuses, you're a hateful bigot in need of re-education. Women's World Cup. Who cares? Where if you dare doubt for a single second the unparalleled high quality of the women's game, thereby acknowledging the unspeakable truth that there are fundamental differences between men and women driven by biological science, you're committing a heresy akin to Galileo saying the Earth wasn't the centre of the universe. <laughs> Yeah, I know the quality's improved a bit since then. But you'd have to be blind to claim it's anywhere near the level of the men's game. If you're interested in women's football and want to watch it, be my guest. But does anyone else find it a little bit odd that they're going out on a limb to monster anyone who's not interested in it? They have an outlet for their dull opinions. Because as anyone living in the UK right now can attest to, there's this kind of strange, cloying, pharisaical, moralising imperative, relentlessly reinforced by constant saturation level promotion by the BBC and the metropolitan media in general, to genuflect and worship before women's football like it's some kind of wondrous expression of the divine. We're living through some very bizarre times across the board. And in case you've tuned out to latest developments in US economic news, let me be brutally frank. Interest rates continue to climb, inflation is getting crazy. The American financial system is in a complete and total meltdown. They're saying recession is inevitable. US debt, did you see this, just got downgraded. You know the last time they did that was in 2011 and what happened as a consequence? 
the rally drove gold prices up to a $1,900 high. Just today, Michael Burry, the Wall Street trader who called the 2008 stock market collapse, the guy they made a movie about starring Christian Bale, has made a $1.6 billion bet on a second crisis happening by the end of this year. Then you look to the rest of the world. Just this week, we learned that the Chinese economy is entering a crippling meltdown, and experts are saying it's going to cause global contagion. What else can we do but try to immerse ourselves in knowledge and information and start to seriously consider precious metals as an alternative to all this chaos. And as regular viewers will know from watching this channel, Lear Capital is the company that I trust to help you make informed decisions about investing in gold and silver. And they've just published this big new report, The Tipping Point, which explains why the American financial system is broken, how the US dollar is on its way to becoming extinct, and the acceleration of plans that we've seen recently for countries to move out from under the US dollar with a new gold-backed currency. Are they deliberately killing the dollar to force us into using a digital currency? And what will all this mean for your financial future and the future of gold and silver? There's a shed load of great insider information in the Tipping Point report and it's completely free, so don't wait. There's no obligation to buy anything, just get that free report. Call 800-411-2430, they're waiting for your call right now. Or even easier, you can just go to leopold.com right now and viewers of this channel will get a massive $250 put in their account today. Simply for calling or filling out a form to get that free information, don't miss out. 800-411-2430 or go to leopold.com to get that free report. It's important, please do it today. Now back to the video. They also use things like international football tournaments as a safety valve to dilute and redirect the natural inclination for patriotism into something banal and non-threatening. And as with football in general, its preeminence is established, the bandwagon is created. Then that bandwagon is hitched to all these other woke social justice causes. We saw this recently with Sadiq Khan's MATE campaign. Mate. Promoted using giant billboards in the centre of London that looked like something out of They Live. Me! A re-education program that redefined normal male bonding behaviour and jokey banter as a deadly form of malevolent misogyny. The prime example of toxic masculinity cited in that campaign? Not like in women's football. Oh my days. Is that a bird running the line? So what, now I've got women telling me I'm wrong about football as well? <laughs> That's so true, bro. What do they know about the game, man? Did you not watch the women's Euros? It's pretty decent. It's yeah, pretty man. decent. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, for a laugh. That stuff's a joke. Of course, the overriding reality behind the Paddy Power commercial is putrid beyond belief. Nobody cares about women's football. Here we are being lectured on morality and ethics by a gambling company. Here we are being browbeaten and hectored on how to be a good person by an industry that takes good people, turns them into hopeless addicts, makes them broke and ostracizes them from their own family until they become bad people. An industry in the UK that contributes directly to exacerbating chronic social problems like bankruptcy, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, domestic violence, crime, co-occurring alcohol and drug-related problems. With the health impacts of gambling alone costing in the UK a billion pounds a year. But yeah, Paddy Power's gonna claim the moral authority to call you a bad person for saying women's football is a bit crap. Women's World Cup. Okay. It's like being lectured about toxic masculinity by Harvey Weinstein. You don't have the moral high ground on anything. So please just shut it with the smug self-righteousness and do what you do best. Lighting the lives of poor people with self-destructive cycles of dependency and addiction while polluting our high streets with pernicious, odious, ruinous temples of sin. You're good at that. Stick to that. The holy trinity of ladbrokes, mobility scooters and paddy power. Bolton's like, oh, you like gambling, do you? You like you like gambling? Okay, what we'll do, we'll add another one. Here we go, Admiral Casino, slots. Slots and slots. There you go. Have a great time. Oh, did you like the slots in there? Oh, here's another one. Have a, have a bet, Fred, as well. And uh, once you've lost all your money, <coughs> you've lost all your money gambling, you've been out burglaring and thieving and selling crack, here's a cash generator. That's it. Bring the stolen goods and get some more money and the cycle repeats. Look at this hellhole. But you'd expect gambling companies to vociferously embrace sanctimonious, vacuous virtue signalling. If there's nothing other than a way to hide the very real damage they do to society on a day-by-day -day basis. Got to improve that ESG score, eh, fellas? I'm gonna pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. So it's no surprise that they'll shame you into liking women's football and call you a hateful bigot if you don't. Because they really just care about female empowerment and shit like that. It has nothing whatsoever 
whatsoever to do with fleecing you for more money you don't have and getting you embroiled into more debt that you can't afford. Women's World Cup. Okay. Meanwhile, on the subject of hateful bigotry in the UK, the media went big with the story that there'd been a homophobic double stabbing outside a gay bar in South London. London Mayor Sadiq Khan, bigotry fighting crusader, was hot on the case, blaming people who engage in the culture war for inspiring the attack. Basically code for white people with right-wing opinions. Gammon. Then it turned out this guy was the prime suspect. Funny sort of culture warrior, isn't he? Strange shade of gammon. Uh, awkward, doesn't fit the narrative. Quick, Distract them with something else. Oh, look, the lionesses are in the World Cup final. Come on, England! Come on! Come on, England! Watch that. Watch it. Watch it, or else you're a hateful bigot. Women's World Cup. Who cares? Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me by subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.